Howdy guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Boris and you're watching What's Up Hot Shot. Today I'm gonna talk about my DOT safety audit, everything I had to do to make sure I passed it. And, uh, just before I get to that, I'll show you guys what I got on the trailer today. Um, I'm just about to drop it off here, so I'll switch the camera around and show it to you guys. And then we'll get right into the video. Alright, so here we are. I'm dropping this off somewhere in Yakima. I've never been there before, so I just pulled over so I can see how much room I have to get in across the street here. Um, this is a lot heavier than it looks. 8,650 pounds of crane. And I actually was able to pick this up right across the street from where I live, so I'm pretty happy about that. There was absolutely zero deadhead. I, uh, just pulled the truck around the block into their parking lot and they loaded up for me. I didn't even have to be there. Just came back later, put some straps on it and then I left this morning. And uh, I don't know, I've never hauled crane before. This is kind of flexible. And I want to get the traps on there pretty tight. So I put some, uh, just some cheap cardboard on there to protect the bags. And looks like it's held up pretty well. It wasn't a long trip, but uh, about 220 per mile so that's pretty good although like I said not going very far but not not a bad trip for today and uh, yeah probably end up dead heading back but that's all right pretty pretty happy about this so I'll go find out where I'm supposed to drop this off and uh, then we'll get right into the video on everything I did to pass my DOT safety audit. I got the letter with me and I'll, I'll walk you guys through it and share my experience, so stay tuned. gonna do this video in my truck while I was on my break and then a big reefer truck pulled up next to me and uh, the refrigerator and it was just making so much noise I couldn't make a video there so now you get to look at this lovely wallpaper behind me instead I uh, I did not pick that out by the way but uh, this is my office here so yeah we'll talk about the uh, FMCSA required safety audit that everyone that has their own authority DOT number, MC number, you have to complete one of these required safety audits as a new business within the first year. And I'm in business almost a year now. I think they waited, uh, they waited pretty late, like next month will be a year for me. So, um, uh, federal government mandates this, but then they actually leave it up to the state to enforce that. So I got this letter here. It doesn't come with the fancy yellow sticky notes normally. I just covered up my personal information on there. Just wanted to show you guys uh, that I'm not making this up. This here details everything you have to do for the safety audit. So we'll go over that. Um, so if you are doing this uh, non-CDL, there is really only eight things that they're asking for. I've seen some other uh, videos and uh, once I started or when I started my uh, new business and just got my MC number active I got like hundreds of phone calls from all sorts of companies that want to make all these safety compliance files and they want to do this and they want to do that and I actually did have one company Unified Compliance Services make a driver qualification file for me and they messed it up. They, that's the worst company ever. I would definitely not, you know, use any of those companies that call you, but definitely do not go with Unified Compliance Services. They were horrible. Their customer service was horrible. They took my money right away. It took forever to actually get that file from them. And then they didn't even put my correct address on there. 
and I, I paid them all the money and then they never got a copy of my driving record which they were supposed to do and I know you can just do it yourself but they were gonna, gonna scan it all in and said you know that's you have to have that is what they told me to pass your safety audit this is a bunch of BS because I didn't need that at all um, that was $200 wasted that you know where the only thing that I actually needed was uh, the copy of my driving record which they never even got for me and yeah I tried to email back and forth with them never got my money back when you google that uh, unified compliance services when you google that number and you type in like complaints there's like dozens of people that are have filed complaints against them I don't know why they're still in business but don't go with anything like that definitely not that company I'll give you right here everything that you will need for your safety audit regardless if you're CDL or non-CDL so the first eight are for everybody this uh, first thing on the list here is you need to give them a list of all your drivers so just very simple word document put their uh, name date of birth date of hire license number and license states on there in my case it's just me so put that in the document converted it to a PDF so it looks a little more professional I did that for all of these and uh, there's actually a website normally on here it shows you a pin number and then you can go to that website you enter that number and you can upload all these documents electronically unless I guess you get uh, audited for uh, an on-site visit but most of the time it's going to be an electronic one uh, very rarely are you going to actually have to do uh, have an inspector come to your business and do an on-site one so second one is a list of all the vehicles that your business has both tractors and trailers owned by the company along with their associated unit numbers fin number and license plate and you must include the electronic locking device uh, make model and year for each vehicle so pretty easy one truck one trailer and put my ELD on there and we're good to go uploaded that next one is proof of insurance every carrier must upload a copy of their signed MCS 90 form from your insurance company so the MCS 90 form is uh, what the federal government calls your uh, insurance certificate basically that you get from your insurance company so upload that you get it you get usually you get it from your insurance company already in a PDF that they email to you so super easy to do that then the next is a uh, driver's medical certificate so regardless if you're CDL or not there's some confusion about this but everyone here you're operating a commercial motor vehicle you need a medical certificate so it's really easy to do you go to the doctor you fill out the questionnaire and you know they check your blood pressure and a few other things and they tell you you're good to go and they sign a piece of paper and it's good for two years so just scan that in and upload it it says on here which I find kind of weird that you only have to upload one person's medical certificate so I guess if you're a bigger company you only have to do it for one person I don't know why but that's what it says on here then the next one is a driver motor vehicle record this is uh, an abstract of your driving record so of the, the driver personally so uh, in Washington State where I live you can just go online and you pay them I think it was $15 or something like that 20 maybe and you can get a full uh, abstract of your own driving record if you have to do it for someone else it's a little more complicated uh, but in my case it's just me and I guess if I had a uh, driver working for me I would just have them do it for me and give me a copy of it but pretty easy to do and you can uh, download it print it out or just uh, I think mine already came in a PDF document so just upload it to the site done with that then the next uh, on the list is they need a copy of driver's license for each driver that operates a commercial motor vehicle so if it's whether regardless of whether or not it's CDL or non CDL but they need to have the appropriate license so if they are operating CDL required for you going to have CDL obviously so upload a copy of that 
Then the next is they wanted one full month of uh, record of duty status. This is uh, basically your ELD locks. So they wanted a whole month of ELD locks. Um, I was surprised how easy it was for me to do that. I have the, uh, where do I have it here? Um, I forgot to bring it out, but uh, I was basically able to do that online. I have like a little USB key, I was gonna show it, but that I plug into my ELD, it downloads the driving records every day. And then when I go into the office, I plug it into my computer and then it automatically uploads it to the internet and it keeps all my locks there and just takes care of everything. It also does EFTA automatically and there's no monthly fees for it or anything. So that works pretty well. Uh, so I just did that, um, saved it as a PDF document for one whole month and I just picked just a random month, it doesn't matter. If they have any questions, they'll contact you later. It does say that they might also require you to submit toll receipts, report fuel receipts, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff for your bills of lading, any kind of supporting documents. In my case, they did not ask for that. They were okay with me just uploading uh, my hours of service records, basically. Then the next is uh, proof of vehicle inspection. So any commercial vehicle, both uh, a trailer and a truck, using it commercially, it needs to be inspected. This is an annual thing, so you get an FMCSA inspection sticker and they'll, they'll put, you put you usually put one on your car and you put one on the trailer and it also comes with a piece of paper that says it has been inspected. And you can do that at pretty much any truck stop, like if you're getting close to needing a new inspection, you just have them do it. And uh, it's not, not too expensive. I don't remember exactly what I paid for it, but I want to say maybe $60 a piece, so 60 for the trailer, 60 for the truck, something like that. But you have to do that before you even start operating. Don't, don't wait till you get your safety on it. Because if you pull through a way station, they, that's one of the things they can ask for. Just like your medical certificate, I've been asked for that a couple times. Because that's a very common uh, violation, I guess, new guys getting into hotshot trucking. And they don't have to feel inspected or they don't have a medical certificate. So make sure you have that before you even start driving. Then there's three more items that only apply to you if you are um, CDL. With, uh, if you are CDL, you are required to enroll in a drug consortium. So it's just some kind of random drug testing program. Basically how it works is you sign up for it, you pay like $100 a year or something like that. It's not too expensive and then once or twice a year they'll call you they'll ask you it's like hey where are you going to be tomorrow or two days from now you tell them oh i'm gonna be you know in seattle washington tomorrow and then they'll tell you okay you can go to this clinic and get your drug test done so that's how that works i didn't have to upload any of that because i'm doing this non-cdl right now and then um there's two others that's may apply or may not apply if you are shipping hazardous materials you gotta upload appropriate documents for that and then if you have been in an accident within the last three years you are required to keep accident records and you need to upload those and that's all that's all that they wanted you could all upload it all digitally online basically even if i didn't have any of this I could do it within a couple of days. Uh, you know, most of the stuff like the driver list, vehicle list, all of that, I just typed it up and saved it in a document and uploaded it. So really overall it was pretty easy. Um, took about two weeks for someone from State Patrol to give me a call. And uh, he said everything looked good, except he couldn't read the expiration date on my medical certificate for some reason. And I know when I went to the clinic there, they didn't give me the original, they gave me a, sc a scan, like a copy of it. So it, it, I 
yeah you couldn't see it very well and then i made a copy of that copy so i i guess they couldn't read the read the date on it for some reason so i had to uh, email him another copy of that and then he also uh, wanted to know the gross vehicle weight of my truck that's uh, the manufactured gross vehicle weight so the sticker that's on the door jam of the truck and then the gross vehicle weight rating for my trailer and he wanted to make sure that both of those are under 26,000 pounds so he told me to take a picture of the sticker on my door and the sticker on my trailer and obviously if you're doing this non CDL combined both of those numbers need to be under 26,000 pounds and but they are in my case so I'm all fine um, I he said he was going to email me to uh, so I could attach those pictures of those three things he wanted send it back to him um, I have actually not gotten that email yet but he said that everything else looked good and I should pass my safety inspection or audit no problem that those were the only three things that he wanted um, now they can ask for more things like like I said they can ask for fuel receipts they can ask you know lodging receipts uh, all of your bills of lading uh, rate confirmations all of that they can request it if you know for some reason whatever they think things don't look right or something but most of the times they they probably won't request anything more than what I just went over so yeah that about wraps it up I just uh, got my uh, quick cart in the mail today too so uh, excited about that um, I've never actually needed it but it can definitely speed up the process in some cases if you're going into some kind of uh, secure or restricted area because basically what this means is uh, it's transportation worker identification card and it means you have passed a some kind of federal background check that's basically the same thing that you do if you want to get on the TSA pre-flight like uh, the TSA pre-check thing so you don't have to go through security you do basically the same thing as you do for getting your trick card so yeah hopefully that will make things easier for me and something I'd recommend if you're getting started out to get that um, I don't know I think it's worth the money it's good let's see it's good till 2024 so and I was uh, I think it was $125 and can definitely save you some time it's not something you necessarily need but so yeah that's about it for business news and the safety audit hopefully this information was helpful to some of you guys um, I have not seen a lot of people talk about this and it's definitely something that's pretty important uh, to have all your ducks in a row and I was kind of worried about this at first was all as soon as I signed up for my own authority and all those companies calling me and telling me oh you need this and you need that and you you know we can take care of this you pay us this much we'll do that and you really don't need any of that I would you know probably just hang up the phone or just tell them you know I'm not interested that's that's crazy once you get your own authority people start calling you and like every every day for I don't know for a month or two I was getting calls and even still now after being in business for a year I still got still got calls from uh, now it's mostly people that want to sell me fuel carts and stuff like that but anyway I'll wrap this video up hopefully it was helpful to you guys uh, we'll have more hotshot videos coming soon and we'll also have some uh, videos uh, some car videos coming up where I'm uh, going to be working on my truck as well as a diesel Mercedes that I have so if you're interested in that definitely subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that, uh, that bell button so you get notified when my next video comes out and yeah if this was helpful for you uh, please leave me a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching